Good afternoon. Welcome to European Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Stanford Engineering. This is the final ses session, session eight uh, of the 2016 speaker series here at Stanford. Uh, today is March 7, 2016. And our topic for the day is From Comets to Startups, Building Europe's Space Tech Entrepreneurship Ecosystem. So uh, our speakers today come from the European Space Agency, Frank Zaltzgeber, who is head of technology transfer in Nordvik at STEC, with who is here with three of his companies from the ESA business incubator system, uh, one from the UK, one from Netherlands, and one from Germany, two hardware, one software company for a little bit of diversity. So we're very pleased to welcome Mark Evans, who is CEO of Adaptix Imaging, a very interesting uh, medical imaging company out of the Oxford Harwell area, who has very disruptive technology around 3D x-ray. Mark, thank you for coming all the way from England to, to be with us. So everyone you know will have had their lives touched at some point by x-ray, be it a dental x-ray or, or quite often a medical x-ray, broken shoulder or whatever it might be. So there's, even though you've got CT scans and MR scans and ultrasound, um, if you add up all of those, the basic planar x-ray, the 2D x-ray, uh, is more than those put together. There's more than 300 million per year in the US alone. So this basic modality is really important in healthcare and used um, for, for things like congestive heart failure, lung cancer, and a range of other different, a range of other diseases. So the thing that goes behind you, the detector, has gone through a transformation. It's gone through from being film to being a digital detector made in a semiconductor foundry. But the thing that goes in front of you hasn't really changed in 100 years. So if you go back and look at the history of Silicon Valley, one of the big drivers initially was vacuum tubes. And those vacuum tubes were, became TVs and, 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 and obviously the first basic computers. But in X-ray, they still use vacuum tubes. Uh, and these are old clunky devices, and they're a single point source. And what we're talking about today is the transformation in that source going from an old clunky tube-based technology to something made in a semiconductor foundry that's a small flat panel. So it's a transformation you've seen before. You've seen a TV set that went from something that was big and bulky, took two people to lift up, to a screen that can go on your, on your phone. Um, so why is that important? Well, it's important because this type of solution that you've seen before, um, the thing that goes that the lady's facing, the detector, that's all gone digital. But the thing in front hasn't. It's a single point source. And that means that what you're getting is you're getting a shadow gram through the person, through all the tissue. And which means you get no 3D information. Uh, you get tissue overlay, so it's really difficult to read. Uh, and because it's a single point source, you can't do any quantification. Also, it's big and it's bulky. There's a big power need. Uh, you need special ele uh, electric electricity supply. And it's expensive. Now, what our innovation is, is to take this thing that already makes x-rays, and what we're going to do is package it up in something that looks like this. So it's 12.6 kilos for a general radiology supply. And for every one of those little orange dots, it's basically a small x-ray emitter made up of things like this on here, this 36. Why is that important? Well, by rastering across and firing them in, in different patterns, we can get 3D information. So this is movement-free 3D. So unlike a CT scanner where they spin the thing around you, this thing just stays, stays still. So the 3D is important because it means you can start to quantify things. Now also, what you're doing is, because you're doing this partial sweep, you get that 3D information at a far lower cost in dose. But also, you've seen me pick this thing up. So it's truly portable. Uh, and with it, with sort of the semiconductor price reduction you've seen, reduced cost in terms of purchase and maintenance, and also reduced power need, because what you're doing is taking lots of low-dose acquisitions. So why have we focused on medical? There are four markets we could have gone for. Well, medical is our primary market, dental our secondary. We expect to license into industrial and security. But medical is our focus market because... Actually, there's lots of big players in there. You all have heard of the big four, Siemens, GE, Toshiba, and Philips. But there's, there's many other players in this market. Likewise, with dental, you've got very different players in that market. So what you'll probably see from us, we hope, is a phased exit pathway as we go through and sell our, uh, sell our, our product into these multiple different markets. So 
there are a lot of trends driving medical imaging. So the first is the move to digital and solid state. You've seen that in film to detect detector. 3D imaging. If you've sort of seen the, the latest ultrasound with the th babies in 3D, that will become evident, but also CT. Portability, taking imaging to the patient to enhance the patient uh, care, but also reduce cost. Lower dose. Screening, in particular in breast imaging, but increasingly now in lung cancer quantification of disease and disease progression, and digital tomosynthesis. I'll explain these later. Now, the first statistics that I, I, I hope will shock you is that um, according to, to the New England Journal of Medicine, one and a half to two percent of all US cancers are caused by CT scans. And that's no surprise when you think about the amount of dose that's uh, resulted from the huge increase in the amount of CT scans. So as a result of that, increasingly there's pressure to reduce dose in medical imaging. One of the other trends I talked to you about was tomosynthesis. So we've seen this in breast imaging. So up in the top there, you've got a machine in the middle made by Siemens. Hologic and GE also make these types of machines. But with this, you can detect cancers that weren't previously visible. And the yellow ring shows this. Now, in 2013, GE brought out a device for general radiology. Uh, Shimatsu and Fuji and Siemens have now followed them. And what this does, it allows that 3D imaging uh, for a limb or a chest cavity. And because it's a reconstructed image, you can basically go through and, 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 and move through the chest cavity like you would a CT scan. And once again, even from where you are now, you can see enhanced vasculature, enhanced airways. It's just much better. And as a result of that, you get uh, sensitivity and specificity approaching that of a low-dose CT. So let me show you what the machine looks like when it's going through. So on the left, you'll see a video. This is the GE volume rad. And what it does is, over a course of about 11 seconds, it takes 60 low-dose acquisitions. It gives about 1.3 times more dose than a standard chest X-ray and an order of magnitude less than a low-dose CT and 1 80th of a full-dose CT. And once again, you've got these images that show the difference in the image quality. So what we're aiming to do is achieve that same image quality or better using a flat panel source. And using a flat panel source that's so light and portable that you can now start to take it to the patient, which you can't do with the current generation of digital tomosynthesis. So this is low dose, low cost 3D imaging taken to the bedside and potentially the GP clinic or an ambulance. And we think that moving the point of diagnosis will give both clinical and economic value. So think about someone who falls over in a nursing home. Imagine if the ambulance could image them in situ and find out it's not a break, and instead you can leave them in the, in the care of the general practitioner for, uh, uh, rather than take them to and from hospital. So again, the USP is low dose, low cost, portable 3D, and we see this as a position in between the current generation of portable planar x-ray. And when we say portable, these things weigh 200 kilos. That's not most people's uh, definition of portable. Now, there are such things as portable CT scanners, but they're still pretty chunky. And they're the size of a small car and cost an awful lot. And what we want to do is bring 3D imaging down at to the same cost as portable 2D imaging and make it better. So where are we? Well, the hockey puck I showed you before, major semiconductor foundry, it makes x-rays. We're starting to integrate that into a system, and pretty soon we'll be starting to bring it into something that looks like this. This is the right space and weight claim per our engineering calculations. And also we've done the image reconstruction. What you're seeing here is a top-down slice through an, a, a small animal skull without any physical movement of the array. So um, that hopefully shows you that um, you get much better image resolution as you go through. So why am I here today talking at a space, uh, a space uh, um, symposium? Well, it's quite simple. We're using space tech. The first is, is that the, the field emitters that, that are at the core of this technology, they are uh, used as propulsion systems on the outside of satellites. Obviously, we use X-ray optics, and, and those, uh, that technology comes straight from space. But also, the, 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 the advanced software processing that we use uh, also has its heritage in the space industry in terms of uh, super resolution and sparse data approaches. So why do we think this is cool? We think this is cool because if we get this right, the current uh, market in 2020 for portable imaging is about $8 billion. That's a good enough market to go after. If we make this, as we hope, something that will be implemented in primary care, 
Well, actually, that makes the market bigger still and more transformational as a product. If we can produce something that's great for the developing world because it's solid state and light and portable and changes the maintenance model, this becomes an amazing product. And then if, as we hope, uh, other recommendations from people like uh, Gothenburg and St. Croce to look at tomosynthesis as an approach for lung cancer screening, this could be uh, an invention, a development that saves many, many lives. So why am I here? Well, we're looking for US investors to assist with what will become a flip into the US. Uh, the US is 45% of the global healthcare market. So clearly, we have to have a commercial foot in this market. Um, and we think that will drive exit value in terms of, uh, in, in terms of uh, creating uh, an awareness of our, of our product and, and, and where we're going. So where are we at the moment? Well, we've raised a seed round. We're in the middle of taking an A round. We've got the technology, so it's working. We've started to, to activate marketing commercial channels. We're not going to sell this direct to hospitals because selling direct to 6,000 plus US hospitals is a, is a nightmare proposition because you have to both sell it and maintain it. So we're working through a channel and we're aiming to sell to OEMs. So the, um, the, the, ne the next uh, uh, objective for us is to then d bring in enough equity to help us grow the business and to give that working capital for commercial production and allow us to hit our target run rate of $100 million plus per year. So thank you very much for giving me your time. Uh, hopefully I've interested you in, in a, a journey that you've seen before in terms of move from vacuum tube to solid state, in terms of something that's big and bulky to something that's small and portable, and also the combination of semiconductor-based devices and advanced algorithms to produce a new product concept. Thank you.